and welcome to Signal Sound Studio Tutorials. My name is Jesper and today we're going to talk about the Behringer X-Touch that I'm using with Ableton. So here is the Behringer X-Touch. Why I have it is because it's automatic faders and there are some other cool stuff it can do. It's not doing exactly what the button says it, it's, it's gonna do, but almost. It's more logic than Ableton controller. But it has the things I need and I'm very glad that I bought it because it's doing what I want it to do. So, if you see right now we have a MIDI track, so if I'm gonna put in, it's just, it doesn't matter which one it is, it's right now it's not the sound we're going after. So, you can see that it popped up right away, and if you notice it's not pointing at zero down here. The zero is right down here. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about that. On Ableton, it's at zero here. So if you don't pay attention to uh, the numbers here, it doesn't matter. Everything works, so you can see in Ableton, it goes. And if you do with the mouse, you can see it's still following. It's not that noisy, but if you can hear, A little sound but it's okay so hit this at zero so you have the select button if we duplicate this two times and you see it popped up but this is just the select button to select tracks so we selected this then we have the mute buttons then we have solo buttons and we have arm buttons up here. We have panning, and if you press it, it will, it will uh, make it the center of the panning. So up here, and this is something I like. Right now it's set to go bars and beats, but you can press this one and then it's second. So if I hit stop and play, you can see this is uh, seconds. So that's pretty cool as well. Right now I hit the globe view and it just turns so you can see all your return tracks up here. So return tracks and back. Then if we duplicate Then the fader banks, you can see now it's up to, we can have them all. Okay, so all of these buttons up here does not work with Ableton. All of these up here, I'm not sure what they do exactly. So I have this always on pang, then you have sense again, you have uh, plugins but then you can just see the plugins, you can't do anything with them. And this doesn't work. So go to pang, so I put down the like a strip with where I could write what it was. So the first one is scream. I named this myself, so this is the toggle between arrangement view and session view. So these, this is pretty cool. And if we'll just make one clip up here, you have the piano roll, but then you can switch between piano roll and the plugin. Then you have undo. 
for the next one and redo. So you can see now the clip will come in and out. So that's underneath. And it will always remember the whole redo and undo. So if you go to the right again, I have the red button. I call it the red button, but it, it, it is called back to arrangement. So if I play, hit play here, and I have go to screens, and I have let's say in here. So right now you can't hear anything because uh, it's it's playing that loop in recession view. If you hit the red button this will stop and you can play your track in here okay then you have your pencil then you have you, you can close your browser you have detail view so <coughs> I call it detail detail view because there is the plugins or piano roll you will take down then there was the redo and then we have a set marker so if I hit play and you can see I can put in some markers if I want to do that and then the marker here is I can hit play and it will toggle between the next one and the next one and the next one Then we have cycle down here is uh, the loop button. And then you have push in switch uh, on both sides. That's the drop and replace. So it doesn't match that. And then it says click and that's not working as well. It will go, the click will go to the beginning of the track and the solo we go to the last of the markers but here's some of the cool stuff as well you can see i can go through the track like this and if you are in arrangement view you can hit the middle so if you see down here by my finger oh, down here if you hit that the place where you hit with your mouse will zoom in and out like but in Ableton 10 it's a little more easy you just mark it and press set and it will go in there and shift set it will go back up so this one is not that usable anymore uh, but it was in Ableton 9 so so this is what I use in my production and the reason I do that is the automatic faders. I hate not having our automatic faders because every time I load in a track I have to rearrange all the faders if I'm gonna use that um, and with the automatic faders the problem is solved. So all the other buttons that's not working it's not I don't care about that because it's just the faders I want to, and I'm interested in. It's just a bonus that some of the other buttons really do work. But it's a bit of a pain that it's not, um, how can you say it, that the, the labels are not fitting with the buttons. <clears throat> but it's okay. So if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and please subscribe. I'm uh, Jesper and I'm signing out. Bye.